Hi book breakers, I'm super excited to be here today talking to you about some very snazzy new book covers. If you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Holly, I am a book cover designer and I also have a YouTube channel where I talk about books and design. When Andy and the team at Book Break got in touch with me and asked if I would like to do a video about these new pan paperbacks, I was so excited about that and I said yes of course because if there's anything that I love as much as books it's book design. These are a new set of book covers for Pam paperbacks and they're celebrating 70 years of paperbacks from Pam Macmillan. They were designed by Justine Anweiler and her team there at, at Pam and they sort of represent that um, 20th century Swiss style, which I'm going to talk about a little bit in a minute. And in case you couldn't tell, I absolutely love these covers. I really do generally think that they are very, very clever. A lot of them do things that I just think I really wish that I had thought of that. So what makes these designs in the Swiss style? Well, first of all, there is the typography and the, the titles and the author's names are set in Helvetica, which is a typeface which has been so widely used now, but it was originally made um, in this Swiss style. It really is the quintessential typeface of this era and this style, and it first came out in the late 1950s. Other traits of the style in general include really bright, bold colours and strong geometric shapes, and also really dynamic angles. So let's have a closer look at some of these covers. The Provincial Lady by E.M. Delafield has been described as kind of 1930s Bridget Jones. The cover has the shapes cropped in a way that the dark circle uh, becomes the curve of the hair and the white circle, a pearl earring, and then the triangle is just the suggestion of red painted lips. This is all achieved with three shapes, a few colours and the word lady and I think that's what kind of pulls it all together and, and makes you realise that, that that's what this image is. If we take away the text or any one of these elements then the cover becomes abstract. And that's what makes this such a successful design. There's nothing more that can be taken away, and it's as minimal as it can be. Then we have Born Free. Now, I wasn't actually familiar with this title, at least not to begin with, so I wasn't sure what it was about. So it did take me a little bit longer to figure out what these shapes were trying to say. So I think that if you were familiar with the title, then it would be pretty obvious straight away. Can you see what it is? It's a lion's nose, uh, which was confirmed when I looked at the synopsis, obviously. Um, but again, if you take away any of these elements, the top triangle, the bottom triangle, or the colour, then it loses its meaning. This cover for Jaws is probably my favourite of the whole series. It's so simple, yet so clever. Using typography to tap into the I iconic image of the shark's fin is just genius and then the colours reference the original film poster. This is one of the designs that I just really wish that I'd come up with. It's just so, so clever, and especially that reference to, to the original film cover, because this is a book that has become so, um, so interchangeable with its film, and that's kind of the picture that comes to your mind, especially with that, that fin. So, yeah, hats off to the team with, with this. This is absolutely brilliant. So Dead Simple is one of these covers which works, but I'm having a really hard time figuring out why exactly it works. And again, you take away any one of these elements and it doesn't work. Now, I thought it was pretty clear from just looking at this without knowing the, the synopsis of the book that this has got something to do with death and what it's trying to represent is the title sort of being six feet under. Yet if you take away the red rectangle at the top, it kind of loses that reading. And likewise, if you take the, away the elongation of the L, and I love how the title reflects the simplicity of, of this design. You know, it's, it's dead simple and so is the cover. So I think that The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is one of most delightful books in the English language. And I think that this cover really captures that. It's got that quirkiness because of the, the colours, but also the shapes 
and it's just referencing this fish, which can be a reference to a couple of things in the book. One is uh, the so long and thanks for all the fish, which is what the dolphins say when they leave the planet. And it could also refer to the Babel fish. And again, the colours here are key to, to us reading it as a, a fish in water. The Lady Vanishes is set on a train, and I love the way that this is kind of represented in these parallel vertical lines which decrease in in their width. It gives you that, that visual sense of the world flashing by. And of course, it also reflects the meaning of the title with the words sort of disappearing behind the lines. Ken Follett's The Eye of the Needle has a completely typographic cover. Having the word eye in white makes it legible and emphasises its importance. If you tried to convey this in a different way, say putting an I or an iris in the O of the of, then it would read very differently because that would then put the emphasis on of rather than I or needle. Dam Busters and Gone With The Wind have more obvious imagery. Not that that makes them any less effective. Again, these objects are distilled down to their most basic shapes and because of the, the kind of visual language that goes along with these stories, it's very obvious straight away that you might not even need the title and you would know at least what sort of book it is, if not the actual title. I had a quick talk with Stuart from the design team at Pan Macmillan and he answered a few questions that I had about the process of designing these. And he said that it was a kind of collaborative thing where they would be shared around at the cover meeting, which is where the important players sit down and talk about the visuals and whether they work and it's sort of a, a collaboration between marketing and some of the executives and the art director. You know, everyone made sure that they were reading correctly and that you, you could still tell what each of the objects are. And I think that's the wonderful thing about these is that they do make you think a little bit. It's not necessarily immediately obvious what each thing is but it, it takes just a moment and I really appreciate that because I love these kind of visual puzzles. It's that element of surprise, which is one of the things that I think makes a, a great design. Something looks one way to start with, and then you realize that there's a little bit more to it. So I'll leave you here with a slideshow of some of the other images that I didn't get a chance to talk about in full, and just so that you can kind of appreciate how beautiful these are. And um, of course, there'll be links but more information about these in the description. Thank you very much to Pan Macmillan for having me on your channel. And yeah, I wish you all happy reading. Bye.